I was very religious about at 10 o'clock, no matter what, I was sitting in front of my desk ready for that power hour. No slacking, you know. And I did that for three months straight. And I literally doubled my income in three months and bought back my time. So more time and more money as a result of... More time, more money, more ease and grace and joy in life. <laughs> Have you got some... Um other suggestions to people, maybe give people a sense of what you did during your power hour that would, um, that how you assumed how, or how you assessed what would be the right thing to do in mm -hmm. that power hour? Well, first off, I made a list of all the 20% activities and I had to educate myself because some 80% activity could feel like a 20% activity, but it really isn't. For example, going to your, uh, your business briefing, now on Zoom, of course, but going to your business briefing, it sounds like a 20% activity, but unless you have a guest, it's really an 80% activity, but you still have to do it, right? So those are, those are some of the things I started to clarify. What is a 20% activity? So the 20% activities really, for me, just come down to following up with people in my, that are in play or putting new people in, or getting out the cards of the person I met and making an introduction, or you know that only. But doing that consistently for an hour without any interruption. Sometimes I take a five minute break, stand up, and then go back and do a second hour. And I started doing kind of the more, maybe they're 20%, but they're a little bit not 100%, 20%. And then I would do those maybe in the second hour after, because you don't really need more than two hours to do all of that, if you're a busy person or you're part-time in the business, you don't need more than two hours. It's just, what are you doing in those two hours? So only the things that create income in my business is the, is the bottom line. Those were the 20% activities. But I'll share something, very transparent, what happened after the 90 days. I kind of went, oh wow, wasn't this amazing? And I did this and the experiment was over, right? But I, I really wanted to just keep doing that for the rest of my life. What happened was I slacked off. I didn't do it as disciplined as I did the first 90 days, and it made a difference. So I've worked at writing desire statements, getting back my power hour, and, you know, things in life come up. My mother was very ill. I took care of her for four years, couldn't really work my business, grateful for residual income and override income. But... Things, life took its its toll, and and that's what I wanted to do. I was grateful to be able to take care of my mom, but then I had to get back into it. And writing desire statements helped me. I have used these desire statements, well, not only to find a husband and some of those other things in life, a renter, uh, I help people with jobs and so on, but I would be like the last day of a uh, incentive. And I needed maybe like five more sales and it seemed impossible. And I was starting to get nervous. I was starting to have the pit in my stomach and all those little signs that come up when stress is there and not the ease. And I have to remind myself, you can do this with ease and grace. And I'd stop. And it only takes me like 15 minutes to write a desire statement. Sometimes I'll be at Starbucks with somebody and we'll do it on a napkin. You know, it's simple. And those things materialize from known and unknown sources. And just because the bottom line is, you get what you focus on. And if you focus on your lack, it's not gonna work. And this is still my mission, still personally, to work with this, to help other people, to teach this, and help people really enjoy their business and not have to be a source of stress.